everybody, it's Serenity. I know it's been a few weeks. As a lot of you know, my father passed away. And it has been a really difficult, trying time for me. Um, today is kind of the first day um, that I've just had some peace and quiet and had a chance to take it all in that my father's no longer here anymore. Um, Monday, my family left and went back out of town. And then yesterday, um, I had to go to work. Um, I probably could have taken yesterday off, but I just decided that maybe going back to work might have been a good thing for me to do to get my mind off of stuff. But as soon as like all my family left, I had like a huge, huge breakdown because I was by myself and it really registered that my dad had passed away. But again, I want to thank you all for all your comments, your messages, um, your little posts that you have uh, given to me on Facebook. It just really, really meant a lot in this hard time. Um, but today I have a day off and I'm at home by myself and I figured I would make a couple videos because keeping busy and my mind off things, um, uh, you know, just keeping busy makes me not think about it so much. So there's been a topic going around here on YouTube about um, coming out of the broom closet, so to speak. And I did a video on this a few years ago when this was kind of going around. And I just kind of felt like I should um, maybe give my insight on what I think about it and um, my opinion. And I kind of want to do... Um, uh, later in this video, a book review on um, a book and some things that have happened. If I have time, I'm not sure. I might be making a part two because, again, because I open a new channel, I have that cutoff time, so I probably, it'll be a second video. But the first thing I want to show you is this book. I don't know if a lot of you, well, I know a lot of you know about this book. Um, it is by a bunch of different people. There are 50 true stories of all different kinds of people from all different walks of life from their stories on how they came out of the broom closet. It is a really, really great book. If you are struggling with coming out of the broom closet, I really highly suggest that you get this book and read it. Um, the book on the back, I think I got it cheaper than what it says, but it says that it was $12.95 and in Canada it's $15.99. I think I got it a little bit cheaper because, um, oh, it wasn't Barnes & Noble, but another bookstore was going out of business and I think I got it on clearance because they were trying to sell all their books. Um, but yeah, it is a really easy read. Um, it talks about, again, people of all walks of life. There are 50 different stories that are true stories, and I highly, highly recommend that you uh, check this book out if you don't already have it. It is very inspirational, and it might help you answer a lot of the questions that you might have, and it also, you might feel like you can connect with someone in this book, or, or maybe their story may resonate with you and help you. So, I really, this is a must read. I absolutely love this book. I've read it a couple different times, and again, it's very inspirational. Now, that brings me to my next thing. Um, some of us have been here on YouTube for a few years, and I thought it would not only showing this book, but it also would be an inspirational idea if, um, I don't know if I want to call this a tag video per se, but it can be a tag, I guess. Um, I would like everybody that sees this video to kind of do their own um, coming out of the broom closet story. If I feel like if other people can make videos on their stories and how they came out of the broom closet, or maybe they're having a hard time coming out of the broom closet, um, the YouTube community is very comforting and very... Um, when it comes to this subject, we're just, we try and all be extremely comforting and um, there for you, so to speak. So if you have any questions or you feel you need some support, um, you found a great community to get that support from. But I would like everybody to kind of tell how they um, came to discover uh, their path and how they came out of the broom closet and what their story was. And I think that it'll be really helpful, like this book was to so many people. I think the stories on YouTube um, 
by making more videos will be very helpful to some of the new people that are new to YouTube as well. So that's what I would like everyone to do um, is just kind of make a video about their story coming out of the broom closet. And again, if you have not read this book, you must, must read it. Um, it is a very easy read. Um, I love this book. And I will just read kind of an excerpt from one of the first pages. Let's see here. I'm not going to read the acknowledgments. Let's see. This first one is, we. yes, we are working professionals. This is the first story. It says, I hang sprigs of holly around my cubicle at Yule and display a lava lamp at midsummer. A small container of sea salt sits readily at hand for when the stress of deadlines leaks from my coworkers into my space. A ceramic fairy dressed in yellow perches on a bookshelf. A goddess calendar hangs on one of the cubicle walls. A mini goddess aromatherapy statue dispenser sits in front of my new flat screen computer monitor right next to the rubber ducky witch. Being Wiccan at work hasn't been nearly as dramatic or traumatic as I thought it would be. It hasn't been painful, awkward, or tense. It has been ridiculously drama-free, and I know how lucky I am. When I started my current job at a relatively small company in a relatively small New England town south of Boston, I was out of the broom closet to my family and friends and had been for years. But I was still keeping my professional life and my personal spiritual life quite separate. I couldn't comprehend how a marketing and commun communications professional could be received, accepted, and taken seriously. If she was to, if she was also openly Wiccan, this belief was initially upheld by an encounter with one of my coworkers shortly after I start, started my job. I was in the women's bathroom washing my hands, and I couldn't see in the mirror. And I could see in the mirror my coworker repeatedly glancing down at the pentacle ring I'd worn for years. It's not Largs. It's not large, it's not ostentatious, but it can't be mistaken for anything but what it is. It is a pagan ring. It was, and this is the only pagan Wiccan jewelry I wear all the time. And I was having my first experience of someone actually noticing. Looking and sounding extremely nervous and trepidatious, she said, That's an interesting ring. What is that, a Star of David? I thought, oh my, here we go, and reached for the simplest answer, one which would put either of us in a combative or defensive position. It's an ancient symbol of protection, I replied. Oh, she said with a clear relief in her voice. I thought it was or could be she gave a nervous laugh the sign of the devil or something. I simply chuckled and told her it couldn't be because I didn't believe in the devil, and the subject was dropped, and I kept very quiet about being Wiccan for several years. I didn't lie about it, but I didn't mention it. I remember when discussions around the holiday plans or traditions would come up, there were a couple of times where my reply had to be, I don't know, I don't remember, I'm no longer Christian, and the conversation would turn. This was fine for a time, but once I left my solitary path, um, dedicated myself, and went through formal first degree training, I found no longer, I no longer wanted to live two lives. I wanted to be openly Wiccan at work, just like I was openly, openly Wiccan with my family and friends. So... It goes on. Um, each story is about three to five pages. I'm not going to read her whole story because it goes on. But that's kind of a taste of the first story. So I think it would be fabulous if we all got together. I mean, there might be people that watch our videos that uh, don't make videos that are struggling with this. So I think everybody should tell their story um, and help other people. Um, my story, very quickly... Um, as a lot of you know, I have not, um, I was raised as a Christian, but I'm very open and I'm very, I'm a very spiritual person. I have not designated a certain path, but people around me certainly know that I am very spiritual. I have all kinds of witchy books, witchy things. Um, I have tarot cards. I just have all kinds of things. And it's so, it's so funny with, and I do like to celebrate some of the traditional holidays that, um, that you know, pagans and Wiccans do. So um, what's funny is I have a stepmother who is very Christian, and with the passing of my dad, a few things have happened, and I'm going to talk about that in the next video. Um, so I guess I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't know how my time is or where my time is. But everyone, please, I think this is a very important thing for us all to come forward because the more of us that are out there, the more openly that maybe this religion will be one day accepted. 
So um, I hope everyone is having a lovely day and comment below and please do a video response and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.